I'm Anderson Cooper at the CNN Center in Atlanta. Our special in-depth coverage of Columbia, the shuttle tragedy, will continue here on CNN. But first, the shuttle headlines. The investigation is now underway into what went horribly wrong with the space shuttle Columbia yesterday. All seven astronauts were, of course, killed. Pieces of what was once a high-flying spacecraft now scattered across the flatlands of Texas and Louisiana. NASA's top official vows to fix whatever caused the disaster. We're going to correct it and move on and uh, be sure that we fly safely, as is our commitment, each and every time we launch and each and every time there's a landing. Johnson Space Center in Texas, home of the astronaut corps and around the world. For that matter, people are mourning the loss of the shuttle crew and asking the question, why? No one wants to know that answer more than NASA. The agency will hold a news conference in about an hour and a half at 4.30 Eastern time to bring us up on the latest developments. CNN will, of course, carry that press conference live. Now, CNN's coverage of the shuttle tragedy continues. <laughs> Miles O'Brien reporting live from the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. This is the place where the astronauts live, where they train, and this is a place today that is in deep mourning. It is a family, the NASA family, that is, a family of people who have uh, like-minded thoughts about space exploration, and today, like-minded thoughts of grief as they go to their respective churches and they pray to their respective gods for the crew of the Space Shuttle Columbia, which perished, as we told you, uh, yesterday. We have a lot to tell you about the investigation. We have live reporters all over the nation covering this story quite literally. Uh, let's begin with an update on the investigation and give you a sense of where uh, the best and brightest at NASA, the real rocket scientists are in trying to piece together what might have happened on board Columbia as it streaked across the United States over Texas, some 207,000 miles in altitude at a speed of Mach 18, 18 times the speed of sound. An independent commission has been formed. It will be headed by the retired admiral who looked into the explosion on board the destroyer, the USS Cole in Yemen. Hal Gaiman is his name, and he will lead an investigative team of about a dozen that will look independently at the body of evidence that exists right now, the data which was sealed and captured within a half an hour after the space shuttle Columbia uh, fell off those computer and radar screens at Mission Control just a few hundred feet from where I stand right now. In addition, there is an internal investigation on going right now, a so-called red team here at NASA, and it is already up and running and doing a lot of business. Uh, a significant series of meetings this morning, uh, and sources tell me that it's uh, given what it is all about and how complex it is, it has gotten off to a good start. Most of the time in this hour and a half meeting, they talked about logistical issues, where people were, how to reach people, logistics, email addresses. They did describe it as being a very organized meeting with a spirit of cooperation. And they did t say that so far, those federal agencies, FEMA, the FBI, NASA, uh, the military, all working fairly well together to try to pursue the ultimate outcome, which is to gather up those pieces and try to see if in those pieces there might be a solution to what is a very, very complex puzzle. Uh, there is also, and, and it's worth pointing out that that is in stark contrast to what happened in the immediate wake of the Challenger disaster. In the wake of that, it was utter confusion, mayhem, disorganization, recriminations. It was an entirely different NASA at this time. This time, NASA seems prepared and organized and at least ready and able to accept the heavy responsibility of trying to determine what caused it in an organized and deliberate fashion. The issue of the debris. This is uh, something we've been talking, uh, we've been talking an awful lot about. The debris which might have, uh, which fell off and did in fact strike, strike the left wing on ascent. It is the left wing which failed prior to uh, the disintegration of the space shuttle Columbia. Is that a coincidence? key question right now. All right, we, uh, that is the question that is currently out there and what we're trying to do right now is get a sense of who knew what. And basically what we know right now is NASA says no one said to anyone in advance that this was a more serious problem than we were led to believe. In other words, this caught them unaware. We have a live uh, news conference to take you to in um, 
Sabine County in Texas. Let's uh, listen in. The Environmental Protection Agency will do that with about their testing. Do you still want people in the area to go ahead and drink water? Take sure, water? yeah. Uh, the way we're, uh, we've been, the uh, word we've been given is that everything looks good. Will you describe this large piece of debris that you recovered? Uh, they, really the large pieces of debris are really just, uh, what, what about five foot? Yeah, four to five foot uh, in diameter. They're, they're about four to five foot in diameter. Um, uh, range in length there, you know, from just a few inches uh, there to, uh, to four or five foot also. What kind of uh, parts are they? Are they? No, we we don't know what what parts they are. Always, what we do know is that it is debris off the shelf. And we we're getting uh, more resources in. Uh, the military has, uh, well, the Department of Defense is sending representatives over now to to give us any assistance that we might need. Uh, the FBI and NASA and all the uh, federal agencies are working real close with us here. Now, how far? Do what? What agencies are here now? We've, we've got all federal agencies almost. You know, we've got uh, uh, DOD, EPA, uh, uh, NASA, FBI, FBI Marshall's Marshall's US Marshall's Office. Service, Secret Service. Uh, FEMA is, uh, you know, in the area. Uh, well, not in the Sabine County, but they're in, there, in our area, so. There's a long list, and we've got a lot of state resources. How far from this area has those uh, pieces of debris been found? What radius in this area would you say? How far from here? Um, what we have, our debris covers a approximately a 250 mile square mile uh, area, running from the west side of our county all the way to the east side. Um, we are concentrating our search, you know, in that pattern. Uh, we, in some places there, it, 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 the debris field there was, was narrower. Some places there, it's wider. But approximately uh, about 250 miles. What about the spot where the foot search is occurring right now for more body parts? <coughs> well, there, there, there are several. There are several areas. It's not just that one area there that we're searching. Uh, we have got uh, several teams of 80 to 100 people there that, that are doing ground searches uh, at this particular time combined with aerial searches there from, from helicopters there that are be, being deployed. We uh, asked uh, residents in the county uh, and throughout the area to report all debris to us and to do not uh, come in contact with it because it could be toxic and uh, uh, please let us know if they find any time. Yeah, I saw I the body parts that you guys found, things like crew items, any comments, anything? Uh, we, we can't comment, yes, we, we can't comment on that right now. Um, uh, you know, we, we have just found uh, all, a lot of debris um, and, and just have, have categorized that, uh, you know, described what it looked like. Uh, took the GPS coordinates and anyway waiting for the EPA there to come along and and uh, remove remove all of this. How's the reservoir search going right now? Uh, a couple of your boats around. Yeah, uh, you know that is being put into operation or, or will be put into operation short, shortly. Uh, we have done aerial searches there over that. Uh, not any ground searches or any uh, from by water yet, but. Uh, we will be doing that shortly. Are you going to send scuba divers into the water? Uh, equipment? We don't plan to right at the moment. Uh, what we are going to do is, is combine the, the boat and, and the aerial searches uh, using underwater cameras uh, and sonar with, with the uh, services there of the Jasper Emergency Corps. Uh, are there pieces in the reservoir or one? Uh, there are, there are, as far as we know, there, there has been debris that has hit Toledo Bend. You know, we know of several there that, that have were been re reported. That reported to us. We don't have confirmation on a lot of these. Um, one or two of them there we do. And, uh, Can you tell us what you do have confirmation about? Like what type of debris? Uh, we, don't, we don't know what it is. We just know there that it was metal in any way it, it submerged. Yeah, and the... Uh, does that include the car, the car fossil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you tell us about the cameras that are being used for 
it's, a, it's, a, it's an underwater camera uh, that is mounted on, on the uh, emergency core boat and it's able to see uh, underwater and it's pretty good depth. And it's been used effectively in uh, drownings that, that, that we've had in Toledo Bend as well as Sound Raven. It goes anywhere from, from some places uh, 40 or 50 feet to uh, several feet. To, yeah. And some places through there, or uh, close to the river, uh, it will be close to 100 feet deep. Yeah. The, the FBI left with styrofoam boxes at noon, raced out of here. Do you know, you know what was in them? I have no idea. It might have been their lunch. It could have been their lunch. <laughs> no, I don't think it was. Eh? Uh.